height. <laughs> but I'm waiting for Facebook. There it is. Hello, everyone. Happy early St. Patrick's Day, and especially to you, Fedesta. I'm Heidi Ferguson, and next to me is Fedesta Ramsey, and this is Cocktails and Pajamas. And um, we are coming to you today just two days, three days after um, the time change. So daylight savings is over. We survived, like we survived a lot of the darkness. And um, yeah, and I'm just really pleased to see longer days, having longer days and longer evenings. And, um, and I will, I do wanna um, add that with that because Arizona does not change their time. In, during daylight savings, East Coast to, to Phoenix is two hours. Now we're three hours. So that, so the math is different. Like three is, cause three is an odd number. It's different. And then, you know, and it's, and it's more time. So it's a little more challenging, but anyway, we're figuring it out. Um, so anyway, welcome everyone. Glad you're all here. Those who are watching and um, I guess I'll do a little check-in. So I've mentioned, you know, the last few times my mental health and the reason that I'm mentioning it is because <clears throat> I, this is so not in my, um, this is so not in my normal realm of feeling good for this long period of time, like throughout the whole winter and feeling really kind of balanced and status quo. I have a lot more, typically I have my dips are, my lower dips are pretty low. And, um, so I'm just really grateful to myself, to my friends for staying connected with me, for supporting me when I need it, when I don't need it, just being here and, you know, being present with me is really important. And um, yeah, and, and I wanna give a shout out to those who are struggling and to invite you to keep going, to encourage you to keep going. Um, and I, I do get that it's hard because I've been where it's hard. I've been in the darkness and that really sucks. It's painful, it's all the things. And um, if you can just believe in yourself for another day. Because the sun always comes up in the morning, even though it might be hazy or cloudy, we may not see the sun, the sun does rise every morning. Um, I think I'm going to, I think I'm gonna stop there um, and ask Miss Fedesta in her teal and navy blue um, to do a little check-in and a little hello. Yeah, thank you. I love that we're starting with the time change because I'm even noticing like how much sun is coming into this room more than usual being like oh these 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 little things but they start to stack up so to speak yeah. and um i'm grateful we survived the winter because it feels very springy here in new york and i'm guessing in philly as well um i love the extra hour of light in the evening it's it's helping me feel more energized more energetic and, you know, I have this little meltdown that happens because <laughs> the winter here is so quiet and I'm very sound sensitive, right? So the marina in front of us is closed. The restaurant next to us is closed. The dogs and children are indoors, right? There's not the lawnmowers and leaf blowers and construction, like the springy things are starting to happen. And I felt myself, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, I had a good cry, actually. It wasn't grief, it was anxiety. I wasn't grieving that winter was going. I feel like I really own the winter in terms of making music and reading books and really enjoying that inward cocooning, the coziness. Um, but I have anxiety <laughs> when winter begins because 
as much as I want all the windows open and all the yummy air to come through and like kind of just bless the house with fresh air, the motorcycles, the lawn mowers, there has been an ever barking dog today. Um, the children less because they're normally giggly and you know, like it's a sweet noise. The construction has begun. The restaurants opening this week. You know, and 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 for me, it's once I'm in it, I work with it. I work with it, but I always have anxiety in the anticipating dealing with it. So it's an interesting place. I've I've watched myself go where I freak out before, and then I kind of like, okay, I'll just put my headphones on or whatever, right? And for anyone who sounds sensitive like me, um, magnesium, a nurse friend of mine had recommended magnesium glycinate because for people who are stressed out by loud sounds, our magnesium stores go down very quickly. And so I prop myself up with some magnesium glycinate, which makes me less sound sensitive. And then when it's, you know, leaf blower time, I have noise canceling headphones because that's just self care. <laughs> for me i could literally go from like a three on the trigger scale to a nine yeah. in those 20 minutes mm -hmm. or i could just put on some bocelli and like not even really think about it yeah so just some tools for anyone who's highly sensitive going into at least in the northern hemisphere kind of the spring noises yeah right um there is yeah that's the most the biggest thing that was alive for me um with the transition was like oh god i have to get geared up a little bit yeah for me yeah right? and there's the blessings of i'm not having to wear a sweater and there's all the good yeah. yummies too but as someone who's struggled to let's say like focus when there's a lot of noise um yeah it comes with remembering there's tools mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyone out there, whether you're sensitive to the time change or sensitive to the new noises of spring or just struggling with something like, please drop a note, like, let us see you in whatever it is that might be coming up related to maybe the seasons, maybe just some people have like, I know I get sad around anniversaries, whatever, like, mm -hmm. just wanting to put that out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, which makes me curious about you. Are you sound sensitive, or am I just making that I up? Am, I'm extremely sound sensitive. I'm well. I'm an HSP, and I feel. <clears throat> um, I think I'm sound sensitive, twenty four seven. Like really, like twelve months a year, and. Um, and I will say, and we have a lot of sirens here, a lot of police, a lot of fire, and just whatever. And, um, and I've been in this apartment five years, almost just about just shy of five years. And I'm like, huh, what? I, I'm noticing how, because I've been here for as long as I have been, that I'm not nearly, I'm still sensitive to, but I'm not nearly as like, oh, it doesn't throw me as much as it usually does as it typically would like when I first moved here. Um, but it still does, you know, and um, and then of course, like you said, the warmer weather is there's a lot more foot traffic. So I hear a lot more conversations and then there are a lot, there's just a lot more. So car windows are down, music's loud, like just, it's, ev it's everything, you know. Um, and then like I was sharing with you, having the windows open means whatever is causing <laughs> allergies and the sneezing, you know, comes through the windows and I'm like, okay, it is time to up my stock of tissues because I am blowing my nose like nobody's business and sneezing like crazy. So, um, but I'll take that, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's not the greatest thing, but I'm just like, uh, I mean, I really want the warm, I want the windows open. I want to feel, you know, the warm air um, because I'm, I think we're all tired of being closed up. Yeah. You know? um, so I'll take the good with the bad, if you will. 
Um, and it's not the end of the world. I realize that because there are just a lot more heinous things going on in the world than Heidi sees. Totally. Um, but uh, yeah, it certainly affects me. It's really affects well, and I think this is, I just love that you said that. Like, yes, there's a lot worse going on in the world. And like, I'm watching as this dog barks every three seconds, two seconds, having to direct my my presence, my focus towards you being a little irritated that someone's not giving a shit about their dog barking for hours. Right. Right. Kind of the watching that part of me get agitated and just being reminded of like, yeah. And like there's impact. Right. And I remember, I think my first shadow workshop, there was some kind of rustling air conditioner noise. Like something was not quite right in this space we were in. And Debbie actually used it in the meditation as like, allow that in, don't resist it, don't fight it, right? Like, don't lend your energy. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't expect to have this quiet meditation space. Right. Let your environment in and still do your meditation. Okay. So I always come back to that teaching, even though I get a little <sighs> irritated. Yeah. So I'm like, how do you not hear that your dog's been barking like since, you know, two o'clock? Like, or do you not care? Are you not home? But like, you're, you're messing with maybe 50 neighbors. Yeah, I get into that place. And that's just me, right? Like, that's, that's me agitating me. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah, I can just like there's a noise and I'm talking to you. So I think alongside all the things I said, spring is also a good time for me to practice noticing where I self agitate. Right, right. Yeah, because there's not a lot <laughs> in the world that we have control over, but we do have control over how we react to things. Yeah. You know, um, and I, interesting that you, that you even mentioned that, because I was like, okay, I, if I remember that, it's a good day because mm -hmm. when there's a, like when there when when there's a lot that I tell myself this is this is agitating me this is annoying it's whatever it is I'm like but you have control over how you react Heidi you don't have control over your environment like your outer environment but you have control over how you react to it so if I'm reacting like I'm really pissed off or I'm annoyed or I'm like, oh my God, I can't, whatever, whatever the reaction is, I'm like, that makes the situation worse, <laughs> right? It does, it just make, it, it just, it escalates it. I'm like, let's not escalate. <laughs> That's just kind of, whoo, you know, bring, bring the temperature down a little bit because, you know, it's one thing, yeah, I, I, I'm, I can easily agitate myself completely. <laughs> When this place too, right? I mean, this could be anything. It's like, we really don't have control of many outside for forces, right? Right. I don't know why people buy really loud motorcycles. I don't know why they feel the need to blare classic rock from them. Like, just enjoy your ride. You know, that's, I can feel my judginess there. Yeah. And if I lend my energy to constantly being frustrated by that, that's on me. Right. Right. And that's an energy leak for me. Mm -hmm. So it's a hard one because I like I often have some idealism around like how we should all treat each other. And I think the biggest piece that continues to be a living meditation mm. is well, what's on my side of the street? Okay, yeah, there's 12 Harley dudes coming to the restaurant. <laughs> I've chosen to live next to a restaurant because it's right. next to the water. Um, I have agency to put on my headphones. Right. I have agency to leave the house. I have agency to um, like just breathe better during those 20 seconds while they're parking. Right. <laughs> right. Like there's all these things and, and that's the only place I have found personal power mm -hmm. is what can I do given what's happening? Yeah. Versus what can I make them do? Right. You know, yeah. 
And I'm going to assume that's a muscle that you have really had to work on to exercise. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And it continues to grow capacity because I get to flex it mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it wasn't always that way. Right. Yeah. 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 What about yeah. you? Because I'm well, feeling I, that I'm too. Saying, I'm saying that because I really want our listeners to know that, you know, you and I have done our individual work just in life on how to handle mm -hmm. ourselves, our relationships with ourselves, our relationships with others, and et cetera, et cetera. And so um, it's not something that just happens overnight. Um, it's, and I will speak for myself when I say it for me, it takes a lot because mm -hmm. I can escalate. I can escalate pretty quickly from like a one or two. <laughs> to like a 10 plus, depending on, depending on whatever it is, right. Depending mm -hmm. on whatever it is. And, um, and I think the one, I will say the one thing that really just irritates the crap out of me is when I hear rap music and they're talking about, and, and it's very foul and they're calling women bees. Like it's that it's just when they're degrading women mm -hmm. and like rap, I can deal with rap. I don't, it's not my favorite, but I'm like, I can listen to rap music. But when they, when there's F you, F you, and the world can hear it, because there's a car with this windows down. I'm like, that just, it's so offensive. Like it's, it's offensive. And, and it's not just offensive to me, I'm sure it's offensive. I would assume to, well, here I am making an assumption, but you know, I'm assuming probably to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that, that actually makes me angry. And I but imagine I feel, there's a value there though. Yeah. 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 I yeah. don't. Um, and I'm not one who, because you've heard me drop the F-bomb. I mean, I'm not, it's not like I'm anti-swearing, but I am anti-degrading um, anybody. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's race. I don't care if it's gender. I don't, I don't care what it is, but when you degrade somebody and you disrespect someone, that's just not okay. In my book, it's mm -hmm. not okay. And it's a judgment and I'm okay. I'm going to own that judgment. Um, and I don't even know how, like, you know, like to undo a judgment, to unlearn a judgment, that would be a tough one for me. You know, like to not have a judgment around that would be a real, it's not work I'm ready to do yet. <laughs> and I come back to, and there's a value attached to it, right? Yeah. Like might be, I know when I've heard that kind of stuff, someone on a park trail or someone out somewhere. And I'm like, oh my God, there's kids on this trail, right? Yes. Like, like, okay, maybe I don't like it, but I'm an adult and I can handle it. But like, there's like a six-year-old right behind you. Like, just be considerate, yes. right? Be considerate. And I noticed too, that just not, might be a place I'm always gonna have a strong judgment. You know, I, it's like, I, so much of my training is like, get curious. Why would that person have it? And it's like, yes, I can go down that trail and I still can choose not to like it. Yeah. But the place you talk about, which I think is really interesting. If I take something that agitates me, say I was at a two and something agitates me to a four, right? My self agitation is being upset that I went from a two to a four and I get to a seven <laughs> on my own. Right because my peace was disrupted. Mm -hmm. And it's like that part I can handle. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like, okay, that big noise took me from a two to a four, but if I get mad about it and go to a seven, <laughs> then who's upsetting my peace? Yes, I am. <laughs> point, finger's gonna point right here. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I can laugh at myself. Seriously. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So tell me just, I, you know, we're always going with the flow here, like mm. something that's alive in your world or something you've been thinking about that you maybe want to share with our audience. Yeah, actually I do. So, yeah. um, so I think, I think I've talked about my nephew playing for Marquette on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So last week, so I was totally mistaken. I was thinking that March Madness started last week. It didn't. So last, he was in, his team was in a tournament last week, which was the Eastern Conference. Like whatever, mm -hmm. whatever teams are in the Eastern Conference that ended up being able to go to the, the tournament. So they didn't win. Um, but, but Marquette had, has placed high enough in the overall nation to go to March Madness. I mean, there are so many freaking teams. There's so many teams. I'm just like, how do they, how do they know who to, like, I can't even imagine this, like the stat board, but anyway, <laughs> um, so they're playing tomorrow. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. They're playing tomorrow, um, uh, NC state. And I think they're playing somewhere in Texas. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, and, and what I noticed last week when I thought they were completely done is that I was experiencing some grief. Like I was heartbroken that they had lost the game and they played so hard and so well. And they came back from a, like a 14 points point spread to a two points. I mean, it was so such a good game and, and they ended up losing. And so, um, and I was like, that's their season. And I was feeling some grief because I just, I have not missed a game. I've watched every single one and, cheered them on and I have my little um <laughs> I have my little superstitions that I do I I'm one of those people <laughs> <laughs> and so um anyway they lost and I was I was really feeling some grief some real sadness around what I thought was the end of his season and um and I'm like wow this is real like I've heard that people struggle with grief and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, when, it, when, when their team is done or when they retire or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get that on some level, even though I don't play, I get it. And um, so anyway, I'm glad that it's not completely over yet, but um, that's been going on. So, yeah. So what about you? What's been? Hmm. Can I ask you a question there first? Absolutely, of course, of course. And I have a story because obviously, you know, Richard has a similar sort of moment oh, mm -hmm. when, when sports ends. Um, but my curiosity for you is like, why, not why, what mattered so much? Like, what were the things you were grieving? Right. Because I imagine it's not just the sports team. I was thinking like a family connection, everyone talking about the game. Yeah. What was like? Yeah. What were you grieving? Well, getting to see my nephew, because mm -hmm. I haven't seen him in real life since, well, I saw him at the uh, Villanova game in January. Mm -hmm. But before that, it was summer of 2019. Yeah. So the pandemic, like grief. The pandemic, um, he left for college. The fall, like it was the summer between his junior and senior year. And we knew that was the last summer that, you know, he'd probably mm -hmm. be able to. So anyway, it's, it's 2019 was the last summer that I saw him in person and could actually spend some time with him. Um, so getting to see him, like getting to see him on TV play what he loves, um, you know, twice a week, at least once a week, but twice a week for the last four and a half months. Has been wow. Yeah. Like a yeah. real part of your, your week. Oh, yeah. a very, very, it's a very important part of my week. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and then to, to be a witness to this brotherhood that mm -hmm. this coach, um, create, you know, supported these boys because the coach from last year got fired. They had a terrible season. He got fired. And this new coach came in and literally just up 
rooted the apple cart, like just kind of like literally like it was a brand new team. I think there might, might have been, besides my nephew, I think there were one or two players that returned. Everyone else was new. Like he recruited a brand new team. And so, and he created this real union, this brotherhood with these kids. And you could see it like if you, if, if you were to watch during the time, like during timeouts, during a huddle, during like, you know, mm. it doesn't matter if they're doing a free throw, whatever, like they're always slapping each other's blacks, giving high fives, hugging. I mean, it's so sweet. And I'm like, and then in my head I go, do other teams do this too? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is a norm or whatever, but it has built this, what I'm gonna, I'm making this assumption. I'm like, for me, that would build trust. Because mm -hmm. there has to be a trust. When you have five players on a floor versus another five players, whether you're playing offensive defense, you have to have each other's back the whole time. So um, that's been really sweet. And then, you know, besides my sister, I have another friend here that I text with. She's been following, she and her husband have, been, and that's who I went to the Villanova game with. Um, so yeah, there's been this just real sweet camaraderie that it's, mm -hmm very organically created yeah. yeah yeah thank you for sharing that because i just wanted to validate right like all the layers that come up with that sometimes oh. i've i've watched my partner go gosh it's so silly that i'm sad about the baseball season ending and it's like it's not but it's not because of all those reasons you know whatever the, his family has in terms of the connections they're all watching those games there's right that it's your Sunday, it's it's like watching that um, amazing, impeccable sportsmanship. You know, I felt really comforted hearing that your nephew has modeling of masculine support. Mm -hmm. That feels super comforting to me to know for him at that age. Um, yeah, so I just, just wanting to validate that because it's like, four months every two weeks and then it's somebody you know and then it's your family engagement in that you know that's a big deal and I'm super happy that you get more of it that might like you could almost like lean into the preciousness of it in a different yeah. way I'd imagine yeah yeah feeling excited for tomorrow so yeah Yay. Ah. Yeah. yeah, thanks for asking about me earlier. I just yeah, I yeah. wanted to know that first because I was like, oh, there's got to be layers. Um, what's a life for me? Well, I shared with you a, an incident that happened in, in my working world recently. And I think where that got me thinking over the last few days has been the places where I felt hurt the most when I think back uh -huh. five, ten years right, have been with people who were avoidant. So conflict avoidant, communication avoidant, you know, the ghosting, the, the I think the disrespect of ghosting, the selfishness of ghosting. Um, <clears throat> and this incident, while well, like, I'm totally cool, had my cry, but I felt hurt. I felt hurt to, to be put in a position of being written off mm -hmm. by someone who doesn't know me. And the wisdom of, you know, the four agreements, that one of like, don't take anything personally. Well, I totally did <laughs> because it hurt my heart. I was like, wow, this sucks. But what it got me thinking about, which is hopefully gonna be, you know, a real shortly is why, you know, I, I always wanna understand people, not at the expense of my own pain, but I wanna understand like, gosh, why do people avoid communication, right? Why do they avoid conflict? Generally, I think it's because they don't have the skills and they know it, mm -hmm. right? But then the cost and the impact on others. And I'm also in a privileged position where my training has gotten me the skills and I've never been an avoidant, I would say never, but. I leaned more on the side of 
like cough it up, clean it up mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I already had that preference and then I got training. So to me, any hard conversation, it's not like I'm comfortable, right? Like I, I have some, I imagine are gonna happen shortly. I'm not comfortable. I would rather not trust me. And I know it's in service to a healthy relationship. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So yeah, I, I don't really have any answers there. I'm just sitting with the handful of times I can think of being deeply hurt uh -huh. has come from people being avoidant. Uh -huh. And I'm going to say protecting themselves and sacrificing the relationship. Yeah. And that's just a shitty feeling to me. Yeah. 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 Um, and talk about building, like talk about building a muscle. <laughs> Going towards the conflict. Mm -hmm. Like that's a muscle. Like that's yeah. a serious muscle that takes commitment, time, perseverance courage. Um, courage oh my god the courage yes the courage yes and so um you know and and we we spoke yesterday today <laughs> i think so <laughs> monday <laughs> whatever a few days ago when you shared that with me and and i you know and i had said to you it's it really isn't about me and or about you and <clears throat> And I, th I think that, like, I would say probably five or 10 years ago, you know, ghosting would have affected me the way it affects you. But I've built, I have really worked on that muscle. Mm -hmm. And I can't say, I, I, on, I, in complete honesty, I can't say that it doesn't affect me at all. Right. But I will say that there are some people I know that that is their, that's their go-to. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm like, that's just who they are. It's who they yeah. are. And I think what, and, and so when I, when I, going back to when you shared with me, I'm like, you didn't know him. So there's no way you could have prepared yourself for how he might have acted or reacted or whatever. So I, it does make sense that, you know, yeah. it hit close to home, especially because you were offering, like you were. I was trying to help. You were extending yourself. Totally yeah. trying to help. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm with you. I really appreciate you naming the spectrum because I think it affects me less now. Yeah. And each time it affects me a little less and I can see past my hurt to ha huh, this is someone's maybe not their character but this is someone's strategy yeah this is a strategy that was developed to protect them it's still online it's still protecting them but at a sacrifice mm -hmm. right um and i also want to bust the myth because people go oh you're a relationship coach it must be easy for you no i know how to do it <laughs> that's my training mm -hmm. i know the steps of how to do it, but that doesn't mean I'm not uncomfortable in the doing of it. Right. And it doesn't mean that sometimes I'd way rather be, you know, sticking my head in the sand. Right. It's just like, I know what it's in service of, so I do it. Yeah. Right. And I know the cost of not doing it. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm still human and it's still scary and uncomfortable and the big awkward, all of that. Yeah. And just like if you get, you know, I love this notion of like, if you can even get like 1% better at it. Yeah. Every month or whatever. Like, yeah. like, it's not a leapfrog from being totally conflict avoidant to being like a masterful communicator. No. It can't be. No, it's not. Yeah. But it could be like, I, I got an inch farther this time. Yeah. You know, and then for me as someone who wants to be liked, right? And I don't do things to be liked, like I'm not bending my behavior to be liked, but I still wanna be liked mm -hmm. in general. And when it seems like someone 
off the cuff just didn't like me. I'm I'm honestly confused. <laughs> I don't mean that in an arrogant way, but I'm just like, yeah, <clears throat> you know, so it also has me look inward too of like, where do I trigger some people? And sure. not that it's mine to, you know, be responsible for their triggers, but to check, just to check, you know? Yeah. So. And I'm... <laughs> 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 and I'm going to say it again, it probably has nothing, even that, even that mm. piece, zero, like it just doesn't. And, and it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see it. And I really, I feel that for you. I really do. Um, and it's, it comes with, it comes with experience. It comes with time. Um, and also I, I want it's so fascinating that you said you know you want to be liked and so <laughs> <laughs> i was and i i do think this comes with age because the older i get the less i give a shit if people like me that's just who i am but i i remember i remember i think i saw this as a meme or a quote it doesn't matter like a quote or i heard someone say this if you, so let's say you, you say, you know, you would like everyone to like you, but do you like everybody? I don't like everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it like, hell no, I don't like yeah. everybody. Therefore, I don't, I know that everybody doesn't like me. Like that's just. Anyway. Yeah, I love that. That totally makes sense to me. And I think I have this high hope of people, right? Like. I've had people not like me on first blush before, and I've had two kinds of people. What happened this past week, which is someone who's just like, I'm not even gonna respond to you. And I've had the opposite where someone said, you know, in a classroom full of 42 people on Zoom, you challenged me the most, so I knew I had to talk to you. Oh, I love that. I've had that as well like your energy and who you were and how big you were being and whatever was really challenging for me. So I knew you were my first partner call, yeah. right? That's a whole different kind of person. Yeah, yeah. Who goes, something about you chafes me. <laughs> and I'm curious. And, and I'm, I'm curious. In. And I'm curious. So yes, I'm mm -hmm. like, give me more. Totally, I get that. I love right. that. Versus something about you chafes me like, See ya. Yeah. Those are just two different kinds of people to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that helps. And I think it was healing balm for me too, for, you know, that you said it's not personal and I know that to be true. Mm -hmm. And then that my colleague was like, listen, I know you, I know your work ethic. I know your integrity. I know you meant well, like, you know, it was helpful to be seen in who I actually am Sure. sure. while being I don't know, painted a certain way by someone that felt unfair. Yeah. And it's all good, you know, God and drag everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because then I get to have a little bit more self love. Right. You know, go, wow, okay. Like, whatever's happening over there, I'm not going to jump over my side of the street to go fix it. But I'm here. Right. I'd love to do have a do-over yeah but i'm not gonna fight you for it yeah yeah i wanted to add you know you talked about how relationally when we go when someone is ghosted like if i'm ghosted or if i choose to ghost somebody which like i don't know lot when i did that last but anyway how it affects the relationship and um I shared some things with you the other day going on in my, you know, in my very close circle and someone who's been affected by this situation, um, I mean, has said out loud, when I get a text or I get it, or I see this person's phone number come up, I don't even want to. I don't want to answer it. Mm 
because because they're never at, they're never they it's not as if they're curious to know how I'm doing. They typically want something from me. So the reason I'm sharing that is because if, if, and I'm just going to say in general, if, if someone is going to go, if whoever's watching, if you're, if you're going to make the choice of you, or if you have made the choice to go somebody mm -hmm. and then months go by or years go by and you decide to call them or reconnect or whatever, it, I, I'm going to challenge you and, and encourage you to go within first before you do that. Go within and ask yourself two things. Why did I ghost three years ago or however long it was? And now, why am I, why am I contacting them now? Mm. And why have I waited three years or however long it's been? Um, and then the other thing that I'm gonna say is that this is an opportunity to course correct to apologize, to come clean, to just say, you know what, I really messed up and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to have a conversation about it. And that means being vulnerable and really putting yourself out there. But to do that, to clean up your mess is going to take you further and it will heal. Be, I will say it will, those are like the beginning steps of healing that relationship. But if you don't do that and you just decide to call them or text them or whatever, it doesn't even matter why you're doing it. I would, I'm going to really encourage whoever's listening to clean up the mess before you do that. Because I've had people come back, like make a mess in whatever context that was. And then come back and I'm just like, who, who, who why is this person talking? Like, that's my first question. I was, I was hurt. They hurt me. They wronged. There was a wrong here, or at least that those are my feelings of it. And I haven't heard from this person in six, seven, eight, nine months. And they're texting me. Hey, how you doing? Oh, no. no. <laughs> Hey, do you really want to know how I'm doing? Because I'll tell you how I'm doing. Yeah. What you did six, seven, eight months ago was not okay. So if you want to clean, I mean, you know, yeah. So there are a lot of ways to, um, a lot of ways to, to, to clean things up. Yeah. yeah. And most people, you know, obviously it depends on the heart. This is no guarantee, but if you show up with ownership, and a willingness to hear impact. Yeah. Right? Hey, I know I dropped you three months ago. I feel horrible about it. I'm not gonna make any excuses. I'm open to hearing impact and how, you know, how we can rebuild that trust or whatever. And then actually letting somebody tell you, I was confused, I was hurt, I grieved, I got angry, I deleted you from my phone <laughs> you know i i couldn't believe that you'd just do that like no i'm not gonna say taking it right right but being able to have enough anchoring in yourself to then let someone share impact right so that they feel seen and heard completely understood and why that was so painful for them and then there is the step forward hopefully where you go, okay, now how do I regain your trust? And how, like, where can we go from here, right? Because I'm actually open to that. Um, yeah. If it's done the right way. And like you, you know, I had a recent, I would say one of the most painful ghostings of my life, just kind of respond in a very casual way, like you said, in an email. And my response was honest. It was like, hey, I would love to reconnect with you. I'd love to take a walk through the park with you. I'd love to be allies and, and support to each other. But we have a mess we haven't cleaned up. And unless that happens, like I, I'm not able, it's not even like I can't, right? I won't have a superficial relationship with you. 
I actually think we deserve more than that. So are you up for cleanup and repair? And of course, I always say, and I'm happy to facilitate that because I can, right? For people who don't know how to do that, it's like, and I'm happy to lead the way, but I can't do like us being chummy. And I never heard back, but that's okay. I at least asked, hey, are you willing to do this? Because without that, I'm not actually interested in a friendship. Well, if, if you, if you decided to just be like, yeah, I'm going to, we're going to race, we're going to act like nothing happened. The foundation, there's, there's no foundation. There's no, our psyches don't work that way. No, no, there's no real foundation. Yeah. And so if you are rebuilding, because you know, you had it, you had whatever was in the past Mm -hmm. and now you're rebuilding on something that doesn't even exist, isn't real. I, so if that, if that happened to me, I could not in, in good consciousness to myself, Mm -hmm. um, and I, I couldn't just, I couldn't go on without repairing, without cleaning up because there's just too much. Mm -hmm. And I hear it as standing for us, right? Because to me, it's like, I'm standing for a true friendship. Mm-hmm. And you can say yes or no to that. It's okay. Mm-hmm. right? I'm not invested in the outcome. But what I won't do is a superficial friendship. Right. And so all I can do from my side of the street is invite people to step up. It's like only all I can do is extend the invitation. Yeah. And it's an open invite, right? There are people I felt hurt by, but if they showed up with real humility and willingness to understand and, like, as you said, course correct, I'd consider it. Mm-hmm. You know, I might still think they're sketchy for a while. Sure. Right? It's yeah. going to be some earned trust. Right. And earned security, but that's okay. Right. right. Yeah. But definitely, you know, if, if, if you've ghosted someone and then you start out with, yo, what's up? Check yourself. Check yourself. Yeah, <laughs> definitely check yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, I wanted to add that, um, given the, the this current topic that we're on, you know, um, one of my dearest friends that um, I see her once, sometimes twice a week. Um, we've had to, we've had to have these hard conversations. Like if something comes up that gets a little crunchy or we don't agree on something. And, and I will say initially, like the, I remember, I don't remember the details of the first time we had to clean it up, but it took, like we had to hang in there and it, it was a long conversation. It was like well over an hour. And now we just dive right in and get to it and clean up within, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes and we can move on. But it does, that also takes practice. Like if you are committed to a relationship and, um, and you want to have authenticity and honesty and trust with your friends, like your closest friends, you've got to exercise that muscle. You've got to put the work in. Yeah. Um, because if you don't, you aren't going to have anything. Yeah. Nothing, nothing to, nothing to really, um, yeah, nothing worthwhile in my book anyway. Yeah. And I love that, like braving it for that really uncomfortable, really awkward stuff. Eventually you do get efficient. Yeah. You know, and you also learn how to handle each other and how to interact and, it's all juicy. And also the trust is always built in the repairing. It, it is. It is. So if we don't repair, there's not, you know, all the things you can do hanging out with a friend are wonderful. But the real trust, the real, like, I know you've got my back kind of trust comes in how we treat each other mm-hmm. when we repair after a conflict. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like the juice is in the repair. It is, it is. Yeah. And it tightens. Yeah. It really, it really tightens the relationship and it, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I can honestly say that, yeah, I mean, there are very few people that I, yeah, that I trust mm -hmm. the way that I trust this other person and you, you know, mm -hmm. um, which is really, it's, I, I don't know how unique that is. Like, I don't know. I don't know, but it's, I'm, I'm just grateful to have it at this point in my life. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Feels really good to hear that. And yeah, it's the, to me, it's the worth it work. Completely. Yeah. So I'm looking at the time. <laughs> How does it happen? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm shuffling the end cards for your request. Um, I do want to say, I know we can't get into it now, but I really love the podcast you shared about regrets. Like layers and layers of gorgeousness oh in there so and good. tenderness. Yes. Um, but I definitely think we could bring it in. in I, the I was thinking about that. I'm like, I would love to talk about that. It's a great topic. Yeah. There you go. There we go. I don't know who froze, but okay. Here we go. Okay. Tell me when, and it'll be the, yeah, the middle finger. <laughs> okay. okay, right there. Okay. Hmm. I don't know if we know this with each other, um, but it's how has my relationship to my family changed since we met. Do we know this about each other? Like, do you feel like you have? Wait, what, what are you asking me? Do, do, do I feel like I know this? That about you? would you, would you be able to answer how has my relationship to yeah. my family changed? Have, do you feel like you've witnessed enough? Cause do I could see this like being like a, a couple's question, right? Do you feel like you have witnessed enough of mine? Not entirely. Let's go to Not another. Entirely. Let's do another question then. Yep. I like the question though. I, I just am like. Great, it's a great question. Yeah. And maybe we talk about it with each other, and then we we know a little more. Yeah. Yeah. I know it from a very like narrow behind the scenes place. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go back one. Yep. Okay, this might be weird too. Has ha maybe not actually. How has having or not having children affected a relationship? <laughs> That's a good one. I can work with that one. Um, I think, I think <laughs> we made it a lot easier. <laughs> right? Notice like no distractions. No distractions, not not just physical, like physical, like interrupting and that kind of thing. But also, if our kids were grown, we would be, you know, like I know, I just know myself well enough that if I had grown kids, I would be, I would be thinking about them, yeah. you know. And not having kids, I'm just like, and I have to tell you, after after this week, I was like, I'm so glad I don't have kids. <laughs> Specifically you know? this week. Yeah. 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 Specifically. I kind of feel that way most weeks, but I was just curious. Well, I, I feel that way every day of my life. <laughs> I really do. Um, yeah. But because some personal things have happened, you know, I'm just mm -hmm. like, I, I don't have to deal with that. I'm so glad. Yeah. Because once you're a parent, you're always a parent. Always. Yes. It never ends. No, I remember people saying, you know, like, oh, it's only 18 years. I'm like, but it's not it's because, not. you know, they could come back and live at the house at 30 and have some issues or just need help. Like it, and, and plus like your heart and your concern isn't going to end just because I turned 18. Right. If anything, it might escalate. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, how has not having children affect our relationship? Well, I'm with you on not the, having the distractions. I think. I think I would be tired. Mm. Like I would be almost too tired for a podcast or too tired to be socializing or too 
that's my sense of things uh -huh. because I would be putting us like a hundred percent into that. Uh -huh. Um, and I think I could be wrong, but I think I would resent that. So I'd probably show up more bitter if I showed up at all, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, a little bitter that like something else has sapped my energy. Yeah. Something else is taking my attention away from, yeah, I wouldn't be as present. Yeah. And I'd be mad about it. I would be pissed. <laughs> I would be. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm okay to, to admit that I'm selfish, mm -hmm. but I, but I've also you know I've made the choices that I've made so that I can be who I am. Yeah, yeah, and I think I can say this to you, and and I feel comfortable saying it to our audience. Like, I have in past lives had children, right? And I have a very clear felt sense of how much work it was very clear, like yesterday clear. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I feel like I made a decision in this life that I just needed a rest. Uh -huh. You know, at yeah. least from that angle. Sure. So sure. to me, it's like, oh, when people are like, oh, but you're missing out on motherhood. I'm like, but you see, I'm not because I've done it. I right. just haven't done it in this incarnation by right. choice. Right. And that's different. So yeah. for what it's worth, that's my my view on it yeah and i love mothering but i also love being like there's no one here so i mother in ways that make me feel like i'm still nourished yeah yeah, yeah. thanks friend that was a fun question yeah it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. and thank you to our audience for being with us today and as always, if you have something you want to ask us or a comment you want to drop, feel free to do that on Facebook in the in the comments. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and we'll answer, you know, when we can, we'll certainly read the comments and, and respond. So don't hesitate to just use that as a place to be seen. Yeah. And happy spring e equinox. Equinox, equinox, equinox. Mm -hmm. Coming up, was that Monday? Sunday, Monday? Monday, Monday. Sunday and Monday, yeah. I mean, the 20th. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's also the Persian New Year, so. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Which feels much more timely than like December 31st. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, I love. Bye, everyone.